the Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Hello, welcome to the Strategic Hot Box. My name is Brandy Stankovic, and I'm an organizational change consultant and a mommy of two beautiful little beefcakes. But I also, in all the travels that I do, get to work with so many young people. So young people and young-ish people and young at heart people. But really today, our focus is on the youth. Um, as you know, I teach at the College of Southern Nevada, and I also have a pretty cool relationship with Boulder Dam Credit Union, which I'll share a little bit about today. And our our special guest today is an expert in all of these areas. His name is Darren O'Reilly, and he's coming to us from Dublin, Ireland. So we'll get to just eat up his accent as well. And today's episode is called How to Lead Millennials. So let's dig right in. As you know, the hot box is broken into three different segments. The first is a learn segment. It's all about sharing knowledge, cool information about business. And I want business to be accessible, to have everybody be able to pick information up and have it be cool to be informed. And that's really important to me. And our leadership challenge or our learn section is all about that. The second segment is called love. It's our opportunity to talk to a subject matter expert, someone like Darren, that's going to be here and tell us how, what's really going on and um, action steps that we can take forward. But really business and life and leadership is all about relationships. So I wanna give it the respect and love it deserves. And finally, the last section is kick ass because ex execution, as I say in every single episode, is everything. Without which, this just is a nice little conversation between the two of us. So we wanna make sure that we're out there making things happen. So when it comes to leading millennials, how do we do that? Um, first, I, I thought I'd start and say, who are they? For anyone that doesn't know um, about a millennial, I, I seriously doubt there's a single person on this planet that hasn't heard something about this millennial, heard that term millennial. But essentially, it's Gen Y, you may have heard it uh, you know, said, but it's a person that's reaching adulthood around 2000. So they were born in the late 70s, depending on the book that you read, or early 80s, all the way up to the year 2000, as a matter of fact. And they they are really 30. So when people come to me, they're like, how do I reach the youth? I want to reach millennials. I'm like, mm, yeah, so millennials are 30, some up to 40 already, right? And so literally, this is this generation that we've been trying to figure out for a very long time. And some people might say in a general sense, a generalized sense that millennials are lazy or entitled, but they're also very uh, quick, tech savvy and quick moving. Um, they're certainly going to help the older generations or the generations that come before them in places like technology. Technology, uh, because they've grown up not knowing any different. I would say the older end of, uh, of the millennial generation or Gen Y certainly got to see the progression of, of technology that's occurred. If you think about it from 1970 to today or, or 1980, even um, late 70s or early 80s to today, that there's a lot that's happened in the world of technology. Shoot. I mean, the last five years, there's a lot of things that have happened in the world of technology, right? So it is an important generation to really get to know and what they how the ins and outs of how they interact as leaders. I get the opportunity to work with the University of Nevada, and uh, in some of the work that I've done with them, some motivational type things, uh, I've talked to them about the fact that it doesn't matter if all of them, these are students that are getting ready to graduate or preparing for graduation, I say it doesn't matter if you are actually lazy or entitled. It doesn't matter because everyone in the business world thinks that you are. Right. And so it's going to be a hurdle or a challenge that they have to get over no matter what. And so really it's about kind of forcing through that 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 hurdle that that they have. And um, I don't know if you've read this stat, you may have seen it, but young people that are ages kind of 16 to 19. So the younger ish of our millennials uh, watch up to three hours of YouTube a day. And if you think about that, the whole world is kind of shifting in what exposure we have to social media, what exposure we have to technology, and how much that plays a role in what we do day to day. Let me give you an example of that. 
I work at a financial institution and uh, one of the people that is in operations, the chief operations officer, was talking to me about cell phones on the teller line. So in a, in a bank or a credit union or any sort of financial uh, institution, you'll have like the front line, the people that you go do different transactions or interactions with. And with that in mind, um, they don't want the, the tellers to have their cell phones out or to be on them. And in fact, she was even making rules where they might be have to be back in their lockers or back in the employee back room and that type of thing. And I said to her, you you know, really, it's not about the fact that somebody wants to be on their cell phone. It's that that's the only means of communication. My husband, I mean, he knows that I'm here doing the podcast today. He knows that I'm in Southern Nevada. But where the studio is, you know, he probably doesn't because he doesn't need to. Because if he needed me, he would call my cell phone, right? And so really, it's gone way beyond the fact that cell phones are just a, a way to get a hold of somebody, but rather they're a part of people's lives. And so I was literally on a, a conference call yesterday and somebody was talking about social media and saying, we don't want to let people see anything on Facebook because once they click on one thing, then they'll click on another and click on another and go down this rabbit hole that is Facebook. And there is a rabbit hole that is Facebook. I mean, we can all agree on that. But the other piece of it, I said on the comp scrolls, so look, you can put all procedures you want in place, but that employee is going into the bathroom on their break and is going to do all of that Facebooking in the stall. Period. It's going to happen. So instead of trying to resist that there is this evolution of leader, let's utilize that and try to build on some of those strengths. So I was at the University of Nevada and I went to the entrepreneur building and their, their program there and said, what is skill does, do young people, do millennials need in the next uh, kind of as they progress and, and graduate college and get jobs? And so all this talk of technology kind of leads me to this. They said to me that most are brilliant typers and writers and can even you know handle themselves in certain kind of communication, written communication places that sometimes people underestimate. But the biggest challenge that they have right now is the social in-person skills. Because our lives are so much on digital devices, they don't necessarily have as, as well-developed of skills socially in person, like interviewing or picking up the phone and calling and all those next steps that sometimes uh, maybe a, a little bit older of a generation takes for granted. So how, uh, what are we going to do really about this whole kind of generational piece? I have the opportunity to teach at Boulder Dam Credit Union, the financial literacy program. We started it in 2003 and we're still teaching it today. So it's been thir over 13 years and I've grown up in this process. The first year I taught it, my, my brother, who you may have seen in our previous episode was actually, you know, his friends were in the class. And now for the first time, my cohort, my partner in crime, Jaron Singleton, his daughter took the class last, last time. So that evolution has actually occurred in the time that we've been teaching it. But one of the things that I've noticed is the younger generation is just a little less exposed and uh, to kind of the dangers of life and a little bit more comfortable. Now, mind you, not all people within this generation um, are, are part of this. Of course, it is a generalization about the generation. Uh, but this, but previous generations were abused in, in a certain sense, right? Whether it's like we can laugh about it from a parenting standpoint or we can laugh about it uh, from just what we had to do in order to get things done. I was having a conversation with somebody that did their dissertation in the 80s. And I'm like, the, fat, the thought of doing a dissertation, because I did mine in 2010, 11, um, the thought of doing that for your doctoral work at the library with like the Dewey Decimal System sounds crazy to me. And so that's just so much harder of an effort. So it, apply that to any part of life or business that things just used to be a little harder than they are now. And, but the downside of that is this access to information is really kind of making us a little kind of weaker in a sense. And what I mean by that is I don't need to know math because I have a calculator on my phone. I don't need to have this information in my brain because I can Google it or Hey Siri it in two seconds, right? And so that actually makes us a little bit worse off. So um, one of the ways to motivate and to ground us in some of those skills is to ask questions and, and not let technology be a crutch. And one of the people that I think uses questions the best is Mark Thompson, Mark C. Thompson. Him and I worked together in the strategic MVP, brilliant executive coach. Go check him out. But for sake of our discussion today, one of the most powerful things that he wrote was a book called Admired. And he talked about identifying those people in your life that you admire and the skills 
skills and capacity and characteristics that you admire about them. And if you use this tool or this exercise, you know, take this book and apply it to this younger generation, you really can get to know the kinds of things that motivate them and inspire them and build some of those social skills in, in the process, but also root the relationship that you have with the organization in kind of a deeper place by identifying those things that they that they seek to be as they admire um, leaders that have come before them. You can learn a lot from a young person or any person really in identifying those characteristics in which they admire in others. So I'd like to bring a subject matter expert aboard uh, to talk to us. But before I do that, I have a very special shout out that we included today because it's coming from his kind of where he's at on the planet. And that is Dublin, Ireland. So let's take a look at this shout out. I'm Brian from Dublin City Bike Tours. Uh, we just hosted Brandy and I had a great time. Uh, so, uh, you uh, are listening to Brandy on her strategic hot box and get your crack on a saddle. Crack, that's a bad pun, all right? That could mean fun or it could mean your ass. In this case, it's fun. So, uh, get your crack on a saddle. Thank you to Brian from Dublin City Bike Tours. And of course, you can check them out at DublinCityBikeTours.com. But it, uh, he gets your crack in a saddle. I feel like I should <laughs> probably use that, but nobody will have any idea what I'm talking about. Uh, when it comes to millennials and young people and getting really the tools that we need to succeed, I want to bring in one of the, the kind of leaders in this area. His name is Darren O'Reilly, and he is a millennial in Gen Z, which is going to be our Gen Z, the next generation even beyond the millennial. Millennials thought leader, and he is in Dublin, Ireland. I'd like you to welcome Darren. Hello, Darren. Hi, Brandy. How are you? Do you use that phrase? Get your crack in a saddle. It's just as well I was muted. I was I was uh, cracking up there, laughing to that. So um, yeah, it was very good. So talk to me. Uh, what is your overall perspective about young leadership? Yeah, young leadership itself is a term that I, I'm a bit uneasy with. I think it shouldn't be a difference between young leadership, old mm. leadership. Leadership is leadership. And I feel that many sometimes believe that years of experience make a great leader. But does time on earth alone actually make a leader noteworthy? And time has proven that a great leader is not defined by their age, but instead it's an individual's raw ability to inspire others to follow them towards a specific vision. So it could be a young person, an old person. I don't think young really matters. I know why we use the word young in terms of recognizing young people to bring along into leadership positions. But I don't think we should distinguish between young leaders and old leaders. A leader is an individual who can inspire action. And I think that's what makes a really good leader. I feel like you should just mic drop after that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that was fantastic. I love it. And I actually love that you bring that up because I have worked with different organizations. It doesn't matter where you are in the, the, the frame of age, but that say, oh, honey, just wait until you get to this place or just wait. And yeah, yes, I will wait. And it, it doesn't necessarily matter about actual age. It's more about tenured experience in, in what you're doing and that type of thing, right? Absolutely. It's not about the amount of, I suppose, years in your life. It's about the amount of life in, in those years. And, oh, you know, good. a young person could have had so much more experience than someone that might have not done as much with their life and mm -hmm. have more to offer. And I've even outside of career and outside of education, even in the sporting world, there's people that are a lot younger than me that have inspired me. So leaders come in all shapes and forms and age. And uh, I don't think we should like put it in a box. Yeah. So what do we need to do then uh, to inspire or get the best out of our millennials or young, the people that work with us? I think what we need to actually do, well, rather than what we need to do, what do they need to do? And with, particularly with millennials, they're often called the everybody gets a trophy generation. Mm -hmm. And as such, a sense of entitlement is assumed on them. And rather than us telling them what they have to do, which is already kind of coming at it from the wrong angle, because we have to tell them, they're, that means they either they're lazy or they're not motivated. They should want to do it themselves. So what can they do to kick their own ass? And they need yeah. to kick the ass of these stereotypes that are out there, that they're lazy Absolutely. or that they're self-entitled. So let their actions speak rather than letting words speak for them. Mm -hmm. Prove their worth and earn their place in society. And for, I suppose, millennials, it becomes an even greater issue when they're faced with trying to manage more mature staff. So instead of whining about not getting the respect as a young leader, 
they need to engage in some self-honest ass kicking. So mm -hmm. rather than us trying to kick their ass, they need to kick their own ass and the ass of these stereotypes and show their passion mm -hmm. and bridge the gap between young and old alike. And don't assume that title bestows that honor. Yes. Lead by example and earn your place. Love it. Are you, uh, just as a kind of an Irish accent question, are you, uh, you know, articulating yourself a little, like enunciating things more? I'm so we to can pronounce myself. Yeah, so well, I you're doing such a great job. You're doing such a good job and all. And you're, you're kind of framing this discussion incredibly articulate. And I, I just really appreciate that. Um, so what then motivates uh, that in, in your experience, what motivates younger people or what can they, we do to kind of take that next level? Yeah, I suppose uh, people in leadership positions sometimes are confused with millennials. They're like constant job hoppers. Mm. Um, so it is important to try and motivate them and retain good people in your organization. And one simple thing would be to just explain the company um, vision. You know, this sure. generation seeks out meaning and they seek out impact in the work. And simply punching the clock doesn't satisfy them. Mm. So by giving them the vision and helping them to understand how their role contributes to a larger plan, provides them with a sense of purpose and a feeling of value that motivates their productivity even further and makes them want to stay with the organization. So I think it's really important that that vision and, and the overall goal of the organization is, is clearly defined for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've already given a couple kind of nuggets of advice in regards to the ass kicking and that type of thing. But what advice do you have for young leaders who are out there trying to make a difference? As I said already, actions speak louder than words. Mm. And, you know, when it comes to personal branding, which is such a, a big thing now, you know, people can invest a lot of time and effort in writing well-worded profiles, cover letters and about me websites. But unless you actually have substantial um, work behind you, graph that you've done, it means nothing. So work hard and get noticed for your quality work and let your actual work speak for you mm -hmm. and let your work speak for your place. It's as simple as that. So really, it's, it does require putting some time in. Absolutely. Like, you know, it, you don't hang the satchel up yet just because you have a degree underneath your your mm -hmm. your it doesn't mean that you're you know lifelong learning is now a thing and the ability to expand your mind and devote yourself to lifelong learning is the key to breaking this success mm -hmm. and you know should you leave a job for money a promotion maybe but the number one reason you know when it's time to move on is when you've stopped learning and mm -hmm. constantly learning is such an important thing for your growth i love it so have you survived any disasters or have any crazy stories you want to share uh, I'm a bit jinxed and my, anyone will tell you that about me that strange things seem to always happen to me but there's actually one story that always stuck with me um, I used to love going to conferences I remember the first conference I ever went to I was in awe of the people you know up there presenting the keynote speakers I just thought they really have their stuff together and I thought I'd never be in that position nor would I ever get a chance to do something like that and then fast forward a year later I was gearing up to give my first ever keynote speech Wow. And it was a tr it was a three hour drive to a, the conference uh, a venue, uh -huh. and I was on a health buzz at the time, and so I was drinking around four plus liters of water a day. Oh wow! So um, I eventually got to the ten minutes away from the venue when the four liters of water decided to want to vacate my body as I sat in rush hour traffic. Oh no! So <laughs> I said, "Hang in there. You're only ten minutes away from the venue." So I was familiar with the venue, haven't been there before, so I knew that as soon as I entered the car park, the restrooms were in straight in the door. So Running from the car, engine barely switched off. Uh, I ran into the hotel to find they had a refurb and changed the layout. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, by now it was too late as uh, I had a mixed <gasps> feeling of, um, I suppose, relief and embarrassment. Oh, as they <laughs> my goodness, you did it. <laughs> yes, the Niagara Falls escaped my pant leg in oh the hotel. Oh, my gosh. Reception. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I just cleaned the car, got changed, had a bit of a clean up. But an hour later, I got up and I delivered what was probably one of the best keynotes I ever done. It was my wow. first and the one that will always stick with me. But I suppose the reason I always remember this story is I think back to that year previous. Well, when first I of all, because you pissed your pants. I think that's well, why you oh, should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't forget a story like that. Putting it bluntly, yeah. <laughs> but when I think back to the year before that, looking at those other keynote speakers, thinking I'd never be able to do it and thinking that they were on some pedestal, that they were better than me. And it just humbly, humbly reminded me that regardless of how far you go in your life, your career, or how big you think you might be, it uh, humbly reminded me that we're all human and right. that that's one thing we all have in common. And you shouldn't be kind of 
put off by someone's perceived status mm. and people were in awe of me that day and that that speech I delivered but little did they know an hour earlier yeah, I was petting myself in the hotel so it wow. always stuck with me to never forget where you come from and always remain humble and that we're all human and I think once you once you understand that everyone you know is the same they all get up in the morning the same way they all have to brush their sure. teeth and go to work you can resonate with people a little bit better and you're not as scared to like talk to CEOs or mm-hmm. introduce yourself to people because we all are human and we all like to we all make mistakes and we all like to you know get to know each other so I think that just stuck with me for some reason that I always remember oh it's amazing and I, I what a cool story to be able to look back on now I'm not sure I'd want to have gone through that but <laughs> I'm sure I, think, I want to be sharing it with everyone here but yeah just really yeah so you just basically that's going to be all over the internet just so you know um I think that what a cool thing though to be able to kind of experience and then look back so do you always carry extra pants with you with you now yeah, yeah. <laughs> All yes. the time. Always. I'm not <laughs> sure I would have extra pants. Like if that happened to me right now, we'd be chilling in. Yeah, we wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, um, so what's an, a piece of advice? I mean, you've given so many awesome little nuggets, but what's a takeaway that everybody can leave with and start implementing today? One I'd actually give as a takeaway, you've said I've given a lot of advice there. In life, you're going to get a lot of advice and you can take it wholeheartedly. You could take elements of it. You might think I'm talking a lot of SH1T. That's your call. (laughs) But in life, everyone's willing to give you an opinion and advice. And the hardest thing is making your own decision and what's right for you and trying to take that information, decipher it, and then make your own decision. And that's one of the biggest things I always struggled with. I was always a little bit indecisive in my life. And I had to learn to be a bit more decisive and be able to make decisions that are right for me. And sometimes you might do something in your career that people might not agree with. But at the end of the day, it's your life. You're only ever going to have today once. You're never going to have it again. So I think, you know, everyone's willing to have advice. The Internet's full of advice. Make your own decisions. Take, learn from people's experiences and mistakes, but make up your own decisions and it's your life. Oh, amazing. What a great kind of takeaway for everybody to to go off with. And you're right. I think, first of all, I love that you said SH1T. That's such a (laughs) cool way to frame, you know, baloney that could come out of anybody's advice mouths, you know, but um, also the fact that you have to make it your own. It's your journey, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much out there now. You can search the internet all day and you can get conflicting advice. One site will say something, another site will say something else. Sure. At the end of the day, you've got to live your life. And sometimes you've got to make decisions that people don't think are correct. Yep. But any books I've read about entrepreneurs or those that are successful, you know, always put themselves out there and, and made their own decisions and were brazen in what they do because they knew wholeheartedly it was right for them. Yep. And look where they are today. So I think, you know, it can be scary when everyone else is against you. But when you do it and you prove them wrong, the satisfaction and, and it's such a rewarding experience. So definitely go do it and earn it. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a part Thanks of the podcast you. today, Darren. It's great to see you, and I hope to see you again very soon. Absolutely. Thank you. My name is Stephen Mullen. This is Boulder Dam Credit Union's financial literacy class. <laughs> Listen up! So thank you to Darren for being here and giving us so, you know, many little pieces of, of takeaways for young leaders, as well as kind of some motivation to get out there and, and be inspired and to inspire others. And thank you to all of my friends at, at the Boulder Dam Credit Union. And they look so goofy when we were making the shout out video together. It was just such a blast. So thank you to, to the credit union and to the, the students there to uh, celebrate and give us a shout out. If you ever want to send us a shout out, please do. And you can email us at podcast at strategichotbox.com or just head to the website and, uh, and submit it from there. So now let's get into our top five for kicking ass. And today I have it broken into two different sections. So I'm going to give you two top fives. It's like double, a double your money or a twofer. Um, so we're going to talk about it from the young professional perspective. And then of course, from if you're leading a, 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 a millennial. So from the young professional perspective, first is practicing humility. I think that Darren said it very, very well. And the fact that you've got to earn it, you got to get out there and just really just be aware of the other people that are in the institution, uh, 
uh, take, you know, try to fill the chip on your shoulder, know that you're not the only person on the planet and know that other people have uh, earned it as well. And so if you're out there willing to do that and practice humility in the process, you'll be even more respected in the future. Number two is ensure uh, your loyalty. So often um, I've even had young people work with me that, you know, kind of brush off loyalty or take it into a different extent and, and really relationships and business. And it's a small world, right? So ensure that you're loyal to organizations that you plan to be around. Be realistic, be open in your communication about how long you do plan to stay or be committed to an organization so you can build those, those relationships within. Number three is focus, limit distractions. We talked about technology and YouTube and social media and all those pieces. Focus your attention, know what you want to go after and go after it. Number four is ask questions. So uh, we're going to kind of see this from the other end too, but ask questions about why we do the things that we do before we question or say that it's bullshit, that it's, that it's happening that way. Some of the biggest kind of issues or challenges that I hear from different leaders that I work with is saying that, oh, the younger people that I work with don't respect everything that we've gone through. Respect that there's a legacy that was there. Respect that people that came before you built the things that you're working on, the foundation that you're springing from. And so ask questions about why before we immediately go into um, kind of the next. And that really ties us into the number five. It's, it's just respecting what comes before, asking questions about how to improve, and it all kind of plays, plays in together. So if we switch frames and we talk a little bit about leading millennials. The first one is to quit whining. Um, we've talked about get over it in previous episodes. We, uh, you know, even Darren was saying that as well, that we got to stop differentiating and saying young leaders versus old leaders. It really just is leadership. And that was just such a cool way to talk about it. But really we have to quit whining and saying this is, this generation is 30 something. If anything, you better have a bunch of millennials working with you or where's your organization going? Number two is offer life skills and education that end of, you know, the social skills that I was talking about that I learned from different universities, working with different universities, offer the future and development and seeing a future that'll create that loyalty that we're seeing on the other side. Number three is deliver that, that career path. Some of the reasons that the frontline positions turn over as quickly as they do is because there isn't a path up to CEO. You have to kind of either make your own path and be brazen, as, as Darren had mentioned, but also really it's it sometimes if you set out that sites, then people will see their future with your organization. Number four, just like from the other side, ask questions. We take the Mark Thompson approach about taking a look at what young, the young people that you work with admire in other leaders, get to know them as human beings and the whole self and everything that's going on in their lives. And number five is very similar as well. Respect the fresh energy. So um, I told you about puppies peeing on the carpet in the very first episode that we were together. And it's just that idea of if you're, if you, respect them as an individual that's going to bring the devil's advocate. It's going to bring the questions of why. And as long as they're kind of respecting the legacy, then you, on the, you know, the flip side, respect the, the energy that a young person, the freshness that a young person brings. So there's your top five from both sides. So thank you again to Darren for an amazing discussion with us about uh, the future of leadership. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, those listeners and people watching about what you'd like to see us tackle here on the Strategic Hot Box. Share your thoughts with us on the website or email podcast at the strategic hotbox.com. Of course, you can always come see us on Twitter or Instagram. It's at Brandy Love. That's L-U-V, B-R-A-N-D-I-L-U-V. And be sure to add this show to your favorite RSS feed and we'll just keep the episodes coming your way every couple weeks. Or you can always download them, of course, at the Strategic Hot Box anytime. So for any ongoing tools or to see that book uh, that, that Mark and I had the opportunity to write together, the Strategic MVP, you can pick a, a copy of that up anywhere that they sell books. And then, of course, Mark's book as well, Admired. Um, check those out. There'll be a lot of tools to help you in the future in leading young people as well as, as the existing staff that you have. So again, thank you to Darren. Thank you to all of you listening, get out there and kick some ass.